very good evening to all our viewers. You're watching Primetime News on TV1. For the news first team, I'm Yuki Poshia. Before we head into your stories in detail, let's start off with a look at tonight's headlines. News first, headlines, main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. KDK, the leader in Indo air quality. KDK, the reliable fan. Malikana prison riots, former prison's commissioner, sentenced to death. No power cuts today, says Ministry of Power. Is there a conspiracy behind the power cuts? Minister of Power raises concern. Hungarian foreign minister in Sri Lanka, 52 million euros at an interest rate of 0% granted to build flyovers in Sri Lanka. No IMF assistance. More loans from China, says CBSL Governor. We are aware of the prevailing situation of the country. Coming three years will be very decisive, says Prime Minister. Representatives of principal organizations visit the Education Ministry. Group fueled by the absence of Minister and Secretary engages in a protest, blocking the road. Another fundamental rights petition filed against the Trincomalee oil tank deal at the Supreme Court. Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa presents facts in court against Minister Basil Rajapaksa. News First Headlines Main Sponsor Valuable Finance, best finance company. KDK, the leader in Indo air quality. KDK, the reliable fan. Starting off with your top story for tonight, former prisons commissioner Emil Ranjan Lamaheva was sentenced to death by the Colombo Permanent High Court trial at Bar over the 2021 Valicata prison massacre for the charge of murdering eight prisoners. Now, although he was released from four charges today, he was found guilty of one charge and was sentenced to death. Former Inspector Neomal Rangajeeva, who was also charged, was acquitted and released from all charges. The case was filed by the Attorney General against former Inspector of Police of the Narcotics Bureau, Neomal Rangajeeva, and former Prisons Commissioner Emil Ranjan Lamaheva for the killing of eight prisoners at the Valikada prison. A special three-judge bench comprising Justices Gihan Kulatunga, Pradeep Hetyarachi, and Manjula Tilakaratna delivered the verdict. A delegation from Hungary led by the country's Foreign Affairs and Trade Minister Peter Siatho arrived in Sri Lanka on an official visit this morning. The Hungarian minister was received at the Katanaika airport by Taragabala Surya, the State Minister of Regional Cooperation. The Hungarian minister, along with the delegation, then attended a business forum. The forum was also attended by Minister of Trade Bandul Gunawardana. Hungarian Exim Bank is ready to finance the cooperation between Sri Lankan and Hungarian companies on the field of commercial credit and also on the field of Tide Aid credit. I have to mention the uh, flagship project, a big success story between Sri Lankan and uh, Hungarian corporate companies. Two flyovers, Kohuvala and Gatambe, will be built by Hungarian companies. 52 million euros of Thai aid credit has been insured by the Hungarian Exim Bank to an interest rate of 0%, three years of grace period, and then 18 and a half years as a repayment period. Hungarian Minister of Trade and Foreign Affairs Peter Sieto then attended the official opening ceremony to lay the foundation stone to the Kohuvala flyover at the Kohuvala Junction today. The flyover, ranging to 297 metres, will be built along the 120 Colombo Horana bus route. Speaking exclusively to News First Azra Hassan during his brief visit, the minister commented on Hungary's foreign policy.
I always base my foreign policy approach on uh, mutual respect. This means that we never think that we might be wiser or smarter than the citizens of that given country. That's why uh, I never interfere into domestic issues uh, of, of other countries. If you need any kind of help, if we can help, we definitely do help, but I mean, you know, judging or lecturing you, it's, it's not our cup of tea. When the government, the Hungarian government, uh, is to make a decision when it comes to, like you said, the economic development, could be the welfare of the people, what is the checklist? What are the basic areas that you cover? We always have to be sure about our national interest and our compass must be the national interest. So whenever we make any kind of decision, be it major or minor, the, uh, the compass, what we have to follow is fulfilling national interest. If we uh, um, follow national interest, we cannot make too big mistakes. Decision-making procedures of certain countries must be respected by the others. The minister also spoke about the export-oriented economy of Hungary. We Hungarians put a lot of emphasis on, on exports also. Our export over GDP ratio has exceeded 85% just very recently. Uh, since we are a small economy, uh, we need to be strong in exports. And uh, regardless of the fact that we are only number 95 globally when it comes to population, we rank number 34 when it comes to the export uh, achievement. And that determines our national economic performance uh, very, very much. Several protests citing many issues that are yet to meet solutions were held in several locations today. The Principals' Union Alliance gathered opposite the Education Ministry in Isurupaya, Batramulla, opposing several issues including recruitment, salary issues and the attempt to close the service. A tense situation arose after the protesters were informed that a responsible official was not available for discussions. Vigula movement surrounding the education ministry was disrupted as a result. After the protesters blocked the road, the police had to close the road opposite the ministry for three hours. After the officers of the education ministry informed the protesters that a time slot will be given on another day for the protesters to meet the minister, a group requested a written confirmation.
The group dispersed after the authorities promised to provide a discussion with the minister on the 21st. Health professionals who engaged in a token strike in the north central province carried out a demonstration in Andhradhapura. They point out that neither the Ministry of Health nor the Ministry of Finance is taking matters to address the pay gap. Karunagarla Prasne Samastia with the Dagan, Evidia Aragon make a visit in Netang, Api last year, no my daughter Barbatala Kriamar get a Apitame Urthin Gay Swadi Nate, Aitia, Abimane, Rakagani Musadaha, Anivar, Akandaragalia Karan to see the Venoa. A large demonstration with the participation of the Mahasanga was held in Hingurana, Ampara today. The demonstration was carried out opposing State Minister Janika Vakkumbura and the Hingurana Sugar Company. The demonstration was held for close to two hours. Let's now toss over to a short commercial break. To stay with News First, we will be right back. News First, main sponsor. Consult a psychiatrist on the ODOC app from the privacy of your home. Sun All Purpose Disinfectant Spray. Valuable Finance, Best Finance Company. Put your health first with family doctors, pediatricians, psychiatrists, cardiologists, and more specialist doctors on the ODAC app. We will also be gifting you with free delivery on Uber Eats once you consult and audio meds on ODAC. One disinfectant to keep your hands, home surfaces, electronic devices and personal belongings safe from bacteria, virus and fungi. Sri Lanka's first SLS certified disinfectant. Now with lemon fresh and ice pine fresh fragrances. Sun all-purpose disinfectant spray. Invest in your health today on ODOC and in return you will live a happier, healthier life. We will also be gifting you with free delivery on Uber Eats once you consult an audio medication on ODOC. Welcome back to the news. The Ministry of Power announced earlier today that no power outages will occur today. Now, although the Ministry made a similar announcement yesterday, many areas experienced a power outage last night owing to a malfunctioning generator at the Kalanithisa power plant. There is no requirement to carry out a power outage today since the breakdown at the Sojits power plant in Kalanithi service restored. Therefore, we can supply electricity without any disruptions. A group of civil activists visited the Human Rights Commission today to apprise authorities of the issues that have arisen due to sudden power outages. This is a major fault. The minister says power outages won't occur but supply is disrupted. We are not interested in commissions although he is. We are in the dark while they gain commissions from diesel power plants. This is an immoral act. There are children sitting for their scholarship exams and many children studying for the advanced level exams. This disrupts their education. <laughs> The Minister of Power, on the other hand, surmises that a conspiracy could be the root cause of the matter. I assigned the Vice Chairman to probe the matter and compile a report. There are some conspirators as well, so we need to find out more about them too. An island-wide power outage was experienced on the 3rd of December last year, following which a discourse emerged as to whether this was an act of sabotage. The report of the committee appointed to probe it has released its interim report. It clearly mentions that a suspicion has arisen over the cause of the outage, a mechanism created by corrupt politicians, immoral businessmen and opportunistic professionals is behind this matter. At this juncture, the government must realize that there is a power mafia and work to eradicate it. 
The power crisis in Sri Lanka emerged owing to a number of factors. Firstly, as a result of the dollar crisis in the country, the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation requested US dollar payments from the Electricity Board to supply furnace oil. Secondly, revenue of the Electricity Board fell due to deferment of payments and other relief provided to electricity bills. The breakdown of a generator at the Norachole power plant is also considered a vital factor that gave rise to the power crisis. The breakdown of the generator at the Norachole power plant is soon becoming a major hindrance to power generation since the reliance on thermal power plants has increased due to low rainfall experienced around reservoirs. If we do not experience more rain, this could be challenging. We expect the repairs at the third unit of the Norachole power plant to end by the 20th or the 22nd of this month. If we have those 300 megawatts, we will be able to supply power continuously. However, we are facing certain difficulties since it is not in operation at present. While the prospect of a major power crisis continues to loom large over the country owing to reduced power generation, authorities have been removing water from Mao Sakale in recent days, claiming a restoration is underway. Meanwhile, the opposition leader Sajid Premadasa says the country could face many crises. Today the country is in darkness. Now those in the electricity sector have said that there will be power cuts for more than two hours. Minister of Petroleum has said that $200 million is needed to import fuel. He is asking money from the cabinet to import fuel. Everyone can see that long queues have formed as a result of poor economic management that took place within a weak state management. In the future, there will be another set of queues, that is, the queues for candles. There will also be queues for lamps. Can we observe and wait and see what happens to the people of the country? We got to know that the government is afraid of going to the people. That was confirmed after they postponed the local government elections by a year. As a nation, we cannot move forward like this. A change must take place in this country. That change must be people-centric. A change that will be favourable to the country. The opposition leader made these comments during a program to donate equipment to the Point Pedro Hospital. The community service program was a 39th phase of the Jana Suve initiative of the Samagi Jana Balavege Husma program. Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Ajit Nivad Cabral, says that discussions are underway to obtain a new loan from China. Now, the governor of the central bank said that this move will assist Sri Lanka's efforts to restructure its debt. The governor made these remarks at the Department of Government Information. Actually, with China, we have uh, a very good understanding about our uh, debt as well as debt repayment as well as investments. In this instance, the uh, assistance that have been sought may have been connected to the debt repayments that we are having. But uh, China, it is only with regard to China, China's uh, transactions. Uh, we have an understanding with China that they would assist us in making the repayments in, the, uh, in that form. So maybe there is a uh, possibility that we would have a new loan coming from China in order to uh, cushion the effect of our debt repayments to China itself. So that's something that we would like to explore. And maybe we will do that in the future as well. So it is it is to cushion the debt repayments to China that we would uh, uh, try to negotiate a new loan uh, for, for that purpose, as well as for any other purposes as well. As you know, China is one country that we import heavily from to China, and we have a good understanding as far as imports are concerned. India is another country that we have a lot of imports from. We are also negotiating with India to have a $1 billion facility with India in order to import uh, goods from India. So it's a kind of a arrangement that would encourage us as, as well as help us to make repayments 
to those countries and at the same time promote more trade between the two countries as well. Uh, Governor, so, how, what, what is the amount? Governor, what is the amount uh, of uh, new loan that you expect from China? Do, do you have any ballpark uh, number? Uh, no, not not at the moment. We will announce that in due course after the negotiations as well as discussions reach a reasonable level of fruition. Uh, we will announce that at that stage. Journalists also raise questions about the official foreign reserves in the country and whether the government will seek assistance from the IMF. After reserves dropped to 1.5 billion US dollars, they increased once again to 3.1 billion US dollars. But the central bank did not reveal the source we received this money from. Market sources said that the money received from China is what consolidated the reserves. There were also views expressed citing that money cannot be used to repay debt and can only be used to purchase imports from China. Similarly, views were expressed that Chinese yuan are difficult to convert to US dollars. The central bank or any bank does not reveal the sources they get their deposits from. What matters is whether we can use this money or not. The Chinese renminbi is one of the most powerful currencies in the world market. There are US dollars, renminbi, pounds, euros and gold in our reserves. We have all the major currencies. I would like to very clearly say that we have reported our total reserves in accordance with international standards. IMF Sammanding we at the Central Bank and the Monetary Board are happy about the alternate journey that we are embarking on at the moment. The IMF is not a magic wand. Going to the IMF will not solve all our problems. Going to the IMF can exacerbate the problems we already have. When questions were raised about the allegations leveled against the 2.5 million rupee pension payment he receives, Ajit Nivad Kabral said that him receiving Receiving a pension payment was clearly mentioned in his appointment letter during his tenure as the governor of the central bank. After four years, I told the former governor that there is something like this mentioned in the appointment letter. I asked him whether such payment will be made. Then the next governor told me that I was not eligible to receive this payment. Thereafter, I dropped that subject. After a few more months, I was informed that the pension will be paid. Then I said, pay me how much you want and I will accept it and I did not make any requests thereafter. I am someone who is at the top of my profession but I do not receive an equivalent salary. I will not live like a beggar if I resign from the governor post. I can earn as much as money I can. I can earn my yearly salary at the central bank in a month. When the Prime Minister asked me to take over the position, they wanted my expertise to overcome the prevailing situation in the country. Speaking at the News First 10 Questions program, leader of the United National Party, Ranim Vikram Singh, said that he would not compromise relationships with multiple countries at the same time if he was in office. I am not the president, but I have said what needs to be done. By 2019, we had developed the economy. The April 21st attacks did not affect the economy to this extent. If I was in office, I would move forward from there. We can take assistance from the IMF after COVID. Where are we taking dollar reserves from? You cannot close down by saying that we don't need dollars or raw materials. That leads to failure. That could lead to the economy collapsing even more. We cannot run by obtaining swaps. After announcing the budget, they have issued 229 billion. There is no point in doing that. We could have given the oil tanks in Trincomalee, developed it and distributed fuel to the entire East India. That was not done. We could have given the East Terminal. We could have earned 2 billion US dollars through the East Terminal Agreement and LTR. The program to give away the LNG was halted. That would have given us an LNG power plant which would have generated 1 billion. Funds could have been generated from the Central Expressway, MCC Agreement and China. I would like to say one thing. If it were up to me, I would not compromise the relationships with America, Europe, Japan and China at the same time. <laughs>
Standard and Poor's has downgraded Sri Lanka to Triple C from an earlier Triple C plus with the outlook negative at the lower level. In a statement, SNP said, and I quote, foreign exchange resources will be further pressured over the coming quarters by additional external sovereign debt maturities and current account requirements, end quote. The statement added, and I quote, these developments indicate a rising probability of sovereign default scenarios playing out over the next 12 months in the absence of an unforeseen positive development, end quote. The negative outlook reflects S&P SL20's expectation that Sri Lanka's external financial position will deteriorate further over the coming quarters. The rating agency said a relief package while boosting economic activity would also weaken the government's fiscal position and worsen the risk associated with the government's already high debt burden. The agency said, and I quote, this could lower the risks associated with the government's debt servicing capacity, end quote. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka, however, said it is perturbed over today's announcement by SNP Global Ratings at a time when the government of Sri Lanka has diligently lined up adequate funds to repay its maturing foreign debt liabilities, including the International Sovereign Bond, maturing on the 18th of January 2022. Central Bank of Sri Lanka said SNP's action fails to recognize the positive developments taking place in Sri Lanka in an environment in which the entire world is grappling with the repeated waves of the COVID-19 pandemic. President's Council Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa raised questions at the Court of Appeal today as to how Minister Basil Rajapaksa has sworn allegiance to the Constitution of Sri Lanka while also swearing allegiance to the United States, even willing to bear arms on behalf of the United States if required by law. Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa raised this concern when the petition filed by Venerable Ulapane Sumangalatero seeking the issuance of a writ order invalidating the post of Minister of Finance and the post of Member of Parliament held by Basil Rajapaksa was taken up for consideration at the Court of Appeal. The petition was taken up for consideration by Judges Sobita Raja Karuna and Dambika Ganepola. Presenting facts on behalf of the petitioners, Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa said that Minister Basil Rajapaksa has taken steps as a U.S. citizen to sign agreements with Sri Lanka for the well-being and prosperity of the United States. He added that the dire consequences of this matter will have to be borne by the people of Sri Lanka. Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa said that the perfect example for this is a secret deal signed to hand over the Yugadanvi power plant to an American company. Presenting facts at the Court of Appeal, Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa said that these petitions that have been filed do not challenge the appointment of Minister Basil Rajapaksa, but his conduct as the Minister of Finance of Sri Lanka. Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa said that Basil Rajapaksa, who has sworn an oath in line with the constitution of a foreign nation, is not legally fit to even hold a position of an office assistant at a government office, let alone hold the position of finance minister in the Sri Lankan government. However, additional Solicitor General Nerin Pule, appearing before the Attorney General, said that the Court of Appeal has no power to take up this case and requested the judges to dismiss the case. The two-judge bench that examined the petition ordered the petitioner to send notices to the respondent Basil Rajapaksa. The petition will be taken up once again on the 7th of February. The petition has been filed by Venerable Ulapane Sumangalatero, former secretary to the Presidential Commission appointed to investigate serious fraud and corruption, Lasul de Silva, and attorney at law, Suraj Walgama. The petitioners has named Minister Basil Rajapaksa, General Secretary of Parliament, and the Attorney General as respondent in the petition. Meanwhile, another fundamental rights petition was filed at the Supreme Court seeking an order nullifying the cabinet decision to transfer the Trincomalee oil tank farm to an Indian company for development and the relevant agreement. The petition was filed by attorney at law Darshana Vera Dua representing Venerable Alle Gunavansatera and Venerable Bengamu Nalakatera. Forty seven individuals, including the Attorney General, the Minister of Energy, and members of the cabinet have been named as respondents on behalf of the President. The Janata Vimukti Peramuna expressed the following views regarding the Trincomalee oil tank deal. We would like to reiterate the plan. Next, the bridge coming from Danushkodi and Pork Strait is the shortest route between the two countries. Building that bridge and giving the Trincomalee oil tank to India has one intention. 
What is it? It is to establish oil pipelines through the shortest route for oil to exchange. These pipelines raises concerns regarding the sovereignty and safety of the country. All of this is happening at a time when the parliament of the country is closed. This is an extremely dangerous situation. We are aware of those who were behind the midnight signing, the Yugadanavi and Karavalapitiya deals. They were revealed later. Who is behind the oil tank deal? Who is the head of the Mineral Resources Development Authority? Find out where they are in this deal. They are the ones who have undertaken a large part of this deal. This must be defeated. Let's now toss over to a short commercial break. Is it 2 a.m. and your baby won't stop crying? You can speak to a pediatrician online on Odoc, even if it's in the middle of the night. They are available 24-7 so you and your baby can cuddle more and cry less. Consult on ODOC today. KDK, the leader in Indo air quality. Over 110 years in bringing you the best of Japanese innovation and technology. KDK, the reliable fan. Some days you might be feeling down and you want to talk to someone. Video channel a licensed psychiatrist on ODOC from the comfort and privacy of your home. ODOC is by your side, always. Welcome back to the news. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa says that he accepts the difficult juncture the country is in. Now speaking at the event to commence the construction work of the East Container Terminal, the Prime Minister reiterated that the government values the next three years more than the past two. Nikuruni Givilagi Wasar Dekakale, Ganalatavila, Vadakna, Alakna, then. There is no point in thinking about the past two years. The government focuses on the next three years. We must accept the difficult situation we are in right now. I believe the COVID 19 pandemic has dragged the country down drastically. We are not hiding that from the people. We will not hide it. We are responsible for the terrible situation the public is in right now. More than inflation, we know that queues to purchase goods are dangerous. A selfish government would not give a concession to the people worth 650 rupees during a financial crisis. <laughs> On one hand, there are deals made by the good governance regime with foreign countries. We must find funds to save and develop these economic hubs. We must do all of this democratically. We cannot suppress the people, like the good governance regime. We will not do it. When we came into power, this country had promised to co-sponsor a proposal brought forward by the United Nations. We withdrew from that proposal. We halted the signing of the MCC agreement. We know that there are repercussions of these acts. The people who love the country must understand this. Don't lose hope in this country. Let those who criticize us harp on the past two years. Let's accept the future. Construction work on the East Container Terminal of the Colombo Port commenced under the patronage of President Gotabe Rajapaksa. The length of the Eastern Terminal will increase to 1,320 meters and has been scheduled to be completed in July 2024. Five million dollars has been allocated as expenses of the project. Today's event included several entertainment items. A ceremony to felicitate the Chancellor of the University of Colombo, Venerable Murutta Tui Anandathiro, was held at the Nelum Pokana Theatre yesterday. The event, which was titled Yativara Harasara, was graced by President Gotabe Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. Administrative Secretary of the SLPP, Renuka Pereira, says there is no hindrance for the Sri Lanka Freedom Party to remove itself from the alliance. Ask them to leave. We did not need Sirisena to inform this government. He came on his own will. I will make a statement bearing full responsibility. Basil Rajapaksha did not answer his calls. Then Athero called Basil Rajapaksha and then handed over the phone to him. 
That is how desperate he was. We left him. Supporters left him too. He joined us to protect himself, not for anything else. Even today, he is attempting to protect himself by attacking us. He is engaging in wicked politics today to ensure his existence. <laughs> Former President Maitri Pala Sirisena attended the Thai Pongal Day celebrations at the Sri Lanka Freedom Party headquarters today. Views were expressed at a number of locations today on the delayed provincial council and local government election. The subject minister has the authority to postpone local government elections by a year. However, a rational reason for the postponement must be given. The fact regarding COVID-19 has been put forward. But those who are in the government now pushed for a general election two years ago when the first wave of COVID-19 was still ongoing. The postponement of this election cannot be justified through COVID-19 or the economic crisis. They claim the election cannot be held because of COVID-19 and quarantine regulations. How did they forcefully hold elections in 2020? It is evident that this government fears an election. That is the truth. They cannot enter a village and campaign for an election. Mothers, fathers and everyone else will attack them with household items. They know it better than us. That is why the election is not being held. If an election is held, we can see the true fate of this government. Tosit Mudalige, Senior Deputy Solicitor General of the Attorney General's Department, passed away at the age of 49 this morning. He was receiving treatment at the intensive care unit of the National Hospital after being admitted due to an emergency health condition last week. In his tragically brief career as a prosecutor, Mudalige was a trailblazer in the criminal division of the Attorney General's Department and the nation's expert in the prosecution of money laundering and complex financial crimes. He mentored police officers on how to build criminal cases of money laundering, fraud and corruption at the highest level and was largely responsible for building the Sri Lankan institutions for combating corruption and money laundering that have been systematically dismantled since the presidential election of 2019. Moving on, the ceremonial induction of Professor Manoj Veera Singha as the 2022 General President of the Sri Lanka Association for the Advancement of Science was held in Colombo today. Professor Manoj Veera Singha was inducted as the 81st General President of the Sri Lanka Association for the Advancement of Science. Professor Manoj has been involved in research on many aspects of public health, health disparities and health-seeking behaviour in marginalised populations, adolescent health, public health program evaluation, health financing and policy transition in developing countries, public health impact of international trade agreements and elderly health are some of the areas he has contributed. Director General, Special Envoy for COVID-19 Preparedness and Response of the World Health Organization, Dr. Palita Bekon, was the chief guest of the event. 78 years has passed and 80 presidents have preceded and the SLAS has done wonders for this country for years and years. And that makes me 
and my duty as the 81st president I think much more easier and I just have to go through the pathway that our forefathers have shown me in SLAS. Taking a look at some news overseas, the World Health Organization said more than half of people in Europe will likely catch Omicron by March as the World Bank warned the contagious variant could hamper global economic recovery. The highly transmissible Omicron strain has swept across countries, forcing governments to impose fresh measures and some rolling out vaccine booster shots. However, the WHO yesterday warned that repeated booster doses of the original COVID-19 jabs was not a viable strategy against emerging variants. The UN body calls for new vaccines that better protect against transmission. Europe is an epicenter of alarming new outbreaks and the WHO said yesterday that the Omicron could infect half of all people people in the region at current rates. 50 of the 53 countries in Europe and Central Asia have now reported cases of Omicron. It is quickly becoming the dominant virus in Western Europe and is now spreading into the Balkans. At this rate, the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation forecasts that more than 50% of the population in the region will be infected with Omicron in the next six to eight weeks. I am also deeply concerned that as the variant moves east, we have yet to see its full impact in countries where levels of vaccination uptake are lower and where we will see more severe disease in the unvaccinated. In sports news, tennis star Novak Djokovic has admitted that there were mistakes on his immigration forms and to meeting a journalist despite testing positive for COVID as Australia mulls deporting him. Djokovic made the admissions in an Instagram post to clarify ongoing misinformation about his movements. The men's tennis number one is hoping to play in the Australia Open next week. But his participation has been overshadowed by a row over his visa. Djokovic, who is unvaccinated, had his visa revoked on the 6th of January, shortly after arriving in Australia amid questions over the vaccine exemption that would have permitted him to enter. On Monday, however, a judge dramatically overturned the decision and ordered the release of the player from detention. However, the government has not ruled out further action and the possibility remains that the country's immigration minister could cancel his visa for a second time just days before the tournament begins. And with that, it's a wrap of primetime news here on TV1. For the News First team, I've been Newt Koshia, along with our sign language interpreter, Brian De Cruz, via Zoom. Take care and good night.